What's up my single chats and my non-single chats? I guess it's that time of the year, guys, that the next Battlefield game just got leaked! Because apparently we got news and leaks about the release date as well, gameplay stuff, destruction stuff. They say that this is gonna be the best, that this is the most intense destruction that you're gonna see. It's gonna be industry-defining destruction. Yeah. We're gonna get into it, like this video, subscribe if you're brand new, and would you give it a chance this time? Roll it. Not two days after I decided to make my first Battlefield video in over a year, does something absolutely insane happen. But as I said in that video, I did promise to keep you up to date with what's coming for the next Battlefield game, and perhaps in this case, what might now not be coming. Yeah, uh oh. oh shit. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things. And I got a quick question. Would you Modern Warfare 3 2023 or Battlefield 2042? If you, if you had just one... Uh, one option. Now, you cannot say, neither schizole, I'm not gonna play any. No, you cannot do that. Just pick one over the other, but wait for it. EA announced on Wednesday evening, aligning themselves with pretty much the rest of the gaming and tech industry, that they were cutting jobs and making people redundant. About 5% of their workforce were being let go. Now, this yeah. is obviously really sad for the individual developers affected, and I yeah. hope they are able to find roles quickly. And we're not talking about like any small company, right? Like EA did that, Activision did that, or I should say Microsoft now. They fired everybody after Phil promised that they're going to make a best, a good environment for devs. I guess him saying that meant like, fire the devs. Bruh. When there are no devs, the environment is good. <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> that was the logic. I mean, I feel bad for the devs, obviously. Sony fired as well. And so many, so many companies are firing devs. Why do you think that's happening? Do you think it's because like... Not, they're not making enough money. I mean, you cannot say that in the case of Microsoft. They're the largest. I believe they're the number one or at least number two, the biggest corporation in the world. So when they're firing most amount of their employees, I'm thinking it's probably related to something else though. I'm assuming it's related to AI. But in Thoughts? terms of Battlefield, the announcement was particularly devastating because it came with the news that the entire Ridgeline Game Studio, recently set up by Marcus Leto in 2021, was being shut down, completely closed. When you look at the wider tech landscape and all the layoffs happening, this is comparatively small compared to the likes of Microsoft and others, but it's still gonna hit pretty hard. Now, if you've been keeping up with all the Battlefield news already, you'll know that Marcus Leto, Halo co-creator and the founder of Ridgeline Games, has yeah. already left EA of his own accord. That's a shocker to, like, a lot of people. Like, I was also shocked, uh, to be honest. Uh, I was not pretending to be shocked. I was really shocked, guys. I was really shocked because he was uh, the, the, the lifeline of Battlefield, right? This is the guy that people thought, like, uh, uh, gonna bring Battlefield back because a lot of people want, like, Battlefield versus Call of Duty they want Call of Duty being good, they want Battlefield being good, and as somebody who loves both of these franchises and wants to play both of the franchises, I'm like, damn man, neither is doing anything. And 2025, uh, we're gonna talk about the release date in a second, but 2025 is gonna be the year of GTA 6. I'm really hoping these suckers do not drop ba the next Battlefield game around the same time. Either drop it before or drop it like three months after GTA 6, because uh, you're definitely gonna shoot, uh, shoot yourself on the foot if you do that cord about a week or so ago or at least that's when the news of that broke now seeing that the entire studio that they helped found has just been shut down by ea that doesn't look fantastic for the upcoming battlefield title set to release in late 2025 yeah. Yeah, late 2025, man, every game, do you guys also feel the same way that every game is coming out in 2025? <laughs> Where are the games? Where are the games? I feel like that this year is gonna be all about us, like, not us, but them hyping all of us up. Bruh. And uh, I, I do feel like the E3 is not happening, you probably heard the news. So if you did not, I mean, shocker, E3 permanently got cancelled, okay? We're not talking about delayed or it's gonna happen next year, now, permanently Cancelled. Okay, E3 is cancelled. I, I guess Summer Game Fest is gonna now fully replace it. Either way, it was uh, replacing it for the last... I mean, e e it's gonna now, okay? Permanently. So Summer Game Fest, I'm assuming, like, we're gonna get so many gameplay reveals, though, and so many uh, game confirmations. I guess the only big FPS game that's gonna come out this year is gonna be Call of Duty 2024. Bruh. I know you guys are gonna be like, Schizo, X to fight, X to fight. Yeah, you're right, but it's like... We don't know when it's coming out, and right now there are new rumors that are saying it's getting delayed once again. Yay. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I really don't know. Now, according to a statement from EA, Marcus Leto made a personal decision to leave the project, 
and the Ridgeline Damn. studio would be wound down with some of the team members there joining Ripple Effect, Brilliant. another of the studios that's working on the Brilliant. upcoming Battlefield game. The statement itself actually led with Marcus Lato's departure, and that led me to believe that the move is one of the main reasons the studio is being shuttered, because it's lost its leader. I could be completely wrong, however. The yeah. statement goes on to say that to ensure work on the single-player elements of the upcoming title continued without being interrupted, leadership at Criterion Games in Guildford in the United Kingdom were appointed to oversee development, which is quite interesting actually because you might remember back in 2020 EA made a similar move for Battlefield 2042, bringing Criterion on board to help yeah. develop the game and take it over the finish line. It's like they they shut down a studio that was working on the campaign and now they're they're having Criterion do their work. So now I'm willing to believe that, yeah, because Marcus Leto left, that's why they are closing the studio. I think that's the reason. What do you think is the reason? Uh, and also we're hearing about they're working on the next battle realm. Bruh. Yeah, <laughs> they're working on the next battle realm. But this time we're hearing it's going to be free, actually. So I guess claps for them. This time it's going to be free. And it's they're saying that it's going to directly compete with Warzone. Now, I'm assuming in my mind that they're going to add destruction in their battle royal. I think this is going to be the quote-unquote big thing about the upcoming Battlefield battle royal. And I hope it got destruction because they did say that this is going to be the industry. It's going to set industry standard in terms of destruction. Uh, I hope. Now, that move hope also came with the infamous statement that Battlefield 2042 was, quote, ahead of schedule, end quote which turned out to be, to put it lightly, wholly inaccurate. And you'll notice that this time there is absolutely zero mention of how the project is faring. Yeah, and that's man. pretty smart on EA's end. They're protecting yeah. themselves after being too loose-lipped last time around. Yeah, now, digging yeah, into this yeah. a little bit more, I think we might need to, right now, readjust our expectations for whatever single-player experience may present itself. Do you guys actually care for... Yeah, let's have uh, like a little chat here. Do you care for campaigns in FPS games? I personally... Listen, man, I'm not against it. I feel like that campaigns... Yeah, truly, campaigns are the souls of the game. But I personally did not mind for example black ops for call of duty right it did not have a camp and i did not mind because we were promised that we're gonna get four zombie maps and those maps are gonna be good but it turned out that those maps weren't that good though i mean they were better than whatever both shots that we're getting but at the time you gotta understand that black ops 4 came out after black ops 3 and black ops 3 zombies was very good so people were expecting black ops 4 zombies to be as good if not better and four maps i mean what are we talking about four maps that's crazy yo so a lot of people were excited myself included and uh, for fps games i don't necessarily care for the for the uh, for the story but a lot of you care i'm not saying that they should not have it battlefield 20 uh, 42 i did not mind whatsoever for battlefield i really don't personally i don't care uh, you can disagree for sure uh, but uh, the here's the thing though they said no campaign for battlefield 2042 but we don't see their efforts being put into good use it's like no campaign you remove the campaign but you also remove the destruction where is the destruction you completely watered down the multiplayer had it been the multiplayer was solid with destruction with revolution with, and the, 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 there were a lot more maps and the maps were quality then 110 percent i i guess a lot more people would be up for no campaign uh and fully embracing the live service but i mean they have show, showed us time and time again that they're not competent enough actually so uh, i'm i'm demanding for a campaign this time 110 percent but it's uh, but it's one of those things right like uh is the campaign gonna be good is it gonna be good or is it also gonna be lackluster i guess find for out the next battlefield game when you shut down an entire studio founded to focus on narrative and world building for the franchise Letting most of those developers go and the studio leader personally choosing to leave the project, that says to me that whatever Ridgeline was working on was may bad. well now be reduced in scope or perhaps scrapped entirely. Yeah. Now, the statement released yeah. by EA does mention that the decision to appoint Criterion to oversee the work and continue uninterrupted might conflict with the idea that everything is being scrapped, but... 
guys, honest thoughts though, like I have not played Battlefield 2042 in a very long time, but I always said this and I always uh, will. When, like I did enjoy its gameplay actually. Bruh. You know, the gunplay is always, uh, it was fun to me, even when it was in beta and when the game came out. I just didn't like other stuff like them changing the class system, specialist, right? All that bull squash, no destruction. You know, the main the main thing, and these are like the major complaints, uh, rightfully so, but l watching the gameplay once again, holy crap, like I do like the look of it actually. Thoughts? Shifting an entire pillar of the game from one recently founded dedicated studio over to a development team who've assisted on the last two Battlefield titles and who also work on their own games, that doesn't inspire me with a huge amount of confidence that the project that Ridgeline was working on will remain as is when it moves over to Criterion. Yeah. EA is saying that it will, but you know, this is a pretty we big change. Know, I do think it's worth taking a look around at the environment that this announcement is coming in. I do see a lot of people online saying that the closure of Ridgeline Games is somehow a reflection of what EA thinks will happen with the next Battlefield game. Maybe they project that it's not going to sell as well as it was, and they're kind of just like cutting out a part that is costing them a lot of money. But Yeah, I mean, billion dollar company struggling right now. <laughs> Billion dollar company. They're making more money than God right now. Like, what are we talking about? But seriously, though, I I don't want to, like, say this, but it's like, I guess you also know this. I, I, I was a huge fan of Medal of Honor. Medal of Honor 2010, no life to it. I believe Battlefield 3 came out right after. Man, those were, like, crazy time. Bad Company 2, Black Ops 1, Modern Warfare 2. I'm talking about the original, not the latest bull squash <laughs> watered-down version with skill-based matchmaking and BBC bundles, right? Like... B uh, Battlefield, 1, uh, Battlefield 3, Bad Company 2, Black Ops 1, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, the original, Black Ops 2, the original. What, what, man, those days were good though, holy crap. And Medal of Honor, I believe they did Warfighter, if I'm not mistaken, in 2013, and that received so poorly, rightfully so, because that game was hot garbage uh, in comparison to Medal of Honor 2010, and they, you wanna know what they did? They completely shut down Medal of Honor. And we still have yet to see. We're not seeing it. So if this time, I have a feeling, man, if this next Battlefield game does not hit, they're going to do the same old crap, guys. They're going to do the same old crap. And I hope I hope the game bangs, though. Recently, we had Call of Duty 2024 leaks. Click on this video on the screen. The leaks are actually looking and sounding good, though. Have you seen it? Not sure if you have or not, but check out this video on the screen. And I want to know your take on it. And I'll see you right there.